Hi guys, it's Kelly here, and I am so happy to be participating in the Among the Stars release blog hop from Simon Says Stamp. So today I am working on one of the new paintables um, from Sis. Okay, I'm never gonna say this right. Susie's Sizzlin series <laughs> watercolor paintables. Um, I love these things. They are basically pre-made card fronts, and they just need to be colored or painted or whatever you want to do to them. Uh, these are my favorite things to do when I'm super busy with my work schedule and I just want to come home and like veg out and just color and relax. So um, yeah, I'm always down for these. You get 12 in a pack and I'm not sure if it's like a grab bag kind of deal because I got 12 in my pack but it's not the same 12 that are showed on the website. So I don't know if maybe there's uh, multiple designs and then you just get, you know, whatever 12 are in that package. I'm not really sure. Um, but I have not been disappointed with any of them. They're all always um, adorable. So I'm fine with that, whatever. Um, here I started coloring the sand. And they have all these cute little seashells that are buried in the sand along with these flip-flops. So I want to make sure that I'm going to um, get some good depth with the hills and valleys because those seashells are buried in the sand. It's going to be darker behind where they are, lighter in front of where they're buried because they'd be like little sand mounds. So I'm trying to get my shading going with that. I originally picked this one because when I was going through all of them, I try to pick which one I want to color based on do I think that I will actually send this to anybody ever or will it just go to the card graveyard here in my house. Um, so when I saw this one, I immediately thought of my friend uh, Jen Shirkus who refuses basically to wear anything but flip-flops. <laughs> she just um, loves, loves the flip-flop. Um, and she lives on the East Coast, so I'm sure she can rock those flip-flops um, pretty much whenever she wants. Um, where, where did she just move? I can't even remember. Somewhere really close to the beach. So anyway, um, so I was thinking of her when I was doing this card. So I've got, I start with my lightest color, which I put all over the sand, and then worked out to my darkest color, which I basically just used for um, some depth behind those little sand mounds and where those items would be buried. And then for my darkest color, I'm going to work back out to my lightest. I did have some technical difficulties <laughs> with this particular card. I'm not sure if I was just like lost in the zone and forgot to turn my camera on or off or what have you. I don't know. There's two areas in which um, my footage is just gone. I'm pretty sure it's probably because I'm dumb. Um, and just didn't turn the camera back on after I had paused at one time. But nonetheless, one of those times is coming up here. You can see that there's a bunch of little dots on the sand. I did that. Um, now I'm trying to get some more texture. I'm busting out a Kathy Rakusin trick here, and I'm using Colorless Blender on just a, like a textured paper towel and blotting that over my sand. If you're going to do this, first of all, super cool texture that you can get. You can use a bunch of different um, washcloths or paper towels or old cotton shirts or whatever you have to get really um, cool texture with that colorless blender. But you should know that you're going to want to do it before you do any other coloring because it's going to cause that ink to bleed. So I did get some brown that bled into um, a lot of my seashells. You can always go back in and clean this up with your colorless blender pen, push that ink back out to where it belongs. I am lazy. <laughs> Let's just say that right up front. Um, and I didn't think it was necessary. I felt like my colors would either A, cover it, or B, there's a lot of seashells out there that have um, some brown spots and such. So I was just like, I'm embracing this. This is... It's a loose, free beach for lazy people who don't want to go back in and push their color out of their images. So basically, it's a beach for me. Um, so I just picked a couple of colors that I thought would play nice um, 
four seashells. I picked some blue greens. I picked some lighter pinks. Um, just, you know, something that I thought would bring in a little bit of color. Um, for the pink, I did add a little bit of like a peach. Then um, for a couple of them, I'm going to bring in the warmer grays. And the way that I'm going to add um, the shading is I'm going to do it with a bunch of little dots. Because there are a lot of shells out there. Like, okay, I've been to the beach and I've looked at shells, but it's been a minute, so I had to Google it. Don't judge me. Um, so anyway, so I Googled seashells and I looked at a bunch of different ones. And um, I decided that the texture on these and the way that the color was incorporated was pretty cool. So I did this um, just by adding the little dots. And then I did this on two of them. And then I went ahead and brought in the cool grays and a little bit of purple because there's some seashells um, and it's really beautiful that had um, like a blue violet um, dots on them. I really liked that. I thought it would pair well, cool color um, with the cool grays. So that's just was how I op was operating. And I did the same exact thing with those little stippling dots. Um, and it, it's just something that's different. You can color your seashells however you want to. They don't have to be realistic. They don't have to be, um, I, I don't know, something that you've seen in nature. They can be whatever you want them to be. That's totally cool. Um, so here we're going to go in and do the starfish. I did have quite a bit of bleeding in my starfish. Um, not like I murdered it and it bled out, but like the color blood into it. Um, so I wanted to kind of get some sort of depth. With a starfish, the way that they are is the top part of it is raised. And then, so in order to get good shading on this to make it look more realistic, you want to shade where um, the points come together. That would be the darkest, and then there would be um, a lighter star on top of the star. Does that even make sense? A lighter star on top of the star. So since I had that bleeding... I'm going back in with a lighter color and trying to etch out that lighter star. Here is point number two where my footage just went missing. I, when I colored the teal part of the sandals, I don't know what happened. But that's okay because lucky for us, I'm going to color these stripes two more times in two different colors. So you'll be able to see what I'm doing anyway. So for these, I decided that I was going to do my shadow. I guess my light source was going to be right up front bam right in front of this business so that's where my highlight would be that's why all of my shadows for my shells are directly behind them because my light source is straight from the um, center front so when I was coloring the flip-flops for the stripes the highlight would be in the middle so all of my edges are going to be where it is darker so I like you, I said before, I've said it before in many videos, I start with my lightest, I work out to my darkest, I'm using a very light hand and small flicking motions, and because these areas are so small, I'm being very careful not to oversaturate. I don't want to have to try to get my colors blender to clean up hot pink off of my white background, because that would not be a good time. For the darkest color, I'm really only just adding one little stripe on the outside, and then blending that out, um, what is that, RV04, with the RV04, and then going over the whole thing with the um, two. So once I was happy with the way that those looked color-wise, I started looking at it, looking at it um, shadow-wise. And I decided to take my C3 and add, um, what are they called? Th are they thong sandals? Is that what they're called? Is that what those things are called? The part that goes in between your toe, yo. Um, <laughs> Toyo, sorry. Oh my god, I'm a nerd. Um, anyway, I thought that they would cast a shadow behind them onto the flip-flop, so I added darker shading behind, um, it, I guess if you were looking at it as a flat object, it would be on top of it, but that's going to help give it some depth. And then we're going to just move on to the next flip-flop. I thought that some lime green would be pretty. Um, with that teal and that hot pink. So I went ahead and brought that in. And then I'm not really, um, I guess, paying too much attention as far as pattern or anything like that right now. I'm going to bring some of that in later. I wanted to have a pretty good balance of the colors throughout the card. And I felt like the one on the, the far right 
it had quite a bit of, like to me when I looked at it the teal was the color that stood out so for the this one I wanted to do pink um, so everybody's been represented <laughs> all the colors have been represented um, on the card so I'm just going to do um, that same shading. I'm going to add the darkest pink just to the top, not to the underneath. Um, and then also where it's coming up out of the sand, that would be darker. And then blend those back out. I'll cap the whole thing off with one coat of my lightest color. And then the teal, I'm going to add just as like an accent. So I'm going to add that to the little buckles um, and the, what do we call that? the border the border of the flip-flop that's what i'm calling it i don't think that's a legit thing but whatever um so for the buckles i added shading just to like the corners so that the highlight would be um in the middle of them like in the middle of each section of the the buckle because i thought that would be cute and then just a little bit a teeny tiny bit of the darkest color this bg49 um, is dark it's no joke it blends really well into the 45 um but you just have to be careful that you don't add too much of it because it can very quickly overwhelm your um, smaller images and then i left a highlight on the top of this flip-flop because this, the way that the light source would be would be coming directly at it and so this top center would be the lightest part of it. Here, I wanted the green to be the standout. So now I've kind of got each color um, good and represented. There are polka dots on this. I am going to color the polka dots a different color. But again, let me state for the record, I am lazy. If I don't have to mask it, if I don't have to color around it, I'm not going to. It's just not going to happen. So I just colored right over it, and I'm going to worry about it after I get all the shading done. Because it is so difficult to color around little polka dots and try to get your shading right. Like, it's just so difficult. I'm not into that. I'm not into making my job harder than it needs to be. I'm into coming home from work, chilling, relaxing, coloring up some cards. So after I had the green down, I went back in with the colorless blender and just blotted um, each individual um, polka dot. Then when I go back in with the teal, um, not that there isn't any green there. I don't want to kid you guys. There is. But I knew the teal was going to be dark enough to color it. So if you try to do something like this, don't put like black all over your sandal and then think you're going to lift it enough to make those polka dots light pink. Like it's not going to happen. But here I knew that that green was pretty light and I knew that the blue green I was using, the teal, was pretty dark. So here, rather than trying to shade each um, individual dot, I'm making them darker where my darker shading is for the green. So I'm only using the BG49 where I've used the YG17, and then I'm just kind of gradually working up um, the flip-flop where it would be lighter. Um, each of them has bare minimum the BG11 and the BG45 but only some of them have the BG49 and this is just an easier way to do uh, the shading versus trying to shade each individual polka dot to match the shading of the flip-flop that surrounds it. We're gonna make these little flowers pink because I like pink flowers and I think they'd be they're a cute accent like I would wear any one of these flip-flops I feel like Jen would too. She'll have to let me know um, when she gets the card. Maybe she'd be like, no, those ones on the left are hideous. I don't know. I don't know Jen's style that well. But anyway, we're coloring up the flowers. We're putting the majority of the shading in the middle of the flower. And then we are going to go back and do that same little shading trick with the C3 for um, to get to get that depth. So behind the the toe insert portion of a flip flop whatever moving on to either way that you look at this we can call it the sky we can call it water it just depends on how you view the image and i think that that's super cool so i started with a b01 and i'm just using the side of my marker and kind of striping it along i'm doing the same thing with the bg00 and then the bg000 and because these particular printables are on watercolor paper, it's very textured, and that's super cool because the Copic marker 
um, when you use a lighter hand like I did with the uh, BG000, um, some of the uh, valleys or where it's indented stay white and I thought it looked super awesome. Um, I also wanted to add some fun patterns because that's what I do um, and I like to color them to the, um, what are we calling those? Do, 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 what am I calling them? Box letters? But I don't want to call them bubble letters. The box letter. I'm going to call them box letters. Whatever. Um, so there I just drew in some fun little designs and I'm coloring them in with the cards that are already, the cards, the colors that are already represented in the card. So for the life, I just stuck the darkest color on top of the line and then colored out to my lightest. For the is, I put the darkest pink right on top of the black line and then colored on either side of it um, out to my lightest color. So that was kind of a different gradient. For the flip, um, I did, I alternated where my darker portion was. So every other line I shaded from the left to the right. And then every other line is shaded the right to the left. So this is just something that was kind of different. I didn't want them to look exactly the same as the life um, lines that were in it or the lines that were in the flip-flop already. I didn't want, I wanted it to be interesting. I didn't want it to be repetitive. So I just kind of flipped it around and found a different way to color it. I really liked the way that it came out. Um, and then for the flops portion of it I just did a like a tone on tone uh, I colored the whole thing with my YG01 and then I went back in with the YG03 and oh no 07 what am I talking about the YG17 and outlined those dots so that way the lighter portion of it was um the the polka dots stayed light and the rest of it got dark so then once I did the 17, I blended that back out with the 03. If you've watched my videos before, you know that I love me a shadow. I love me a shadow. And especially with anything um, like this, like lettering, I think it's super cool to make it pop up. So I start with my darkest color. In this case, it was C5. Then I blend it out with my C3 and then blend it out again with my C1. I outline all of my images because I think that they look better that way. So I used a journaling pen to outline everything that was on there, all the lettering, all of the images, and now I'm going back in with a white gel pen. I added polka dots to the middle flip-flop, and I also added some highlights onto the seashells. This is clear Wink of Stella, which I put over all the seashells, and then I went ahead and put it on just the um, accents of the flip-flops and the highlighted portions of the sand, because when you go to the beach and you look at the sand that is dry, it does look very shivery, very glittery, just the way sand is designed. So that's the whole card. Simon Says Stamp is doing a giveaway on everybody's blog, so you just need to leave a comment to do that. So if you're watching this around June 17th of 2016, head over to the blog. There's a link uh, below to do that and possibly win a prize. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.